Hello everyone. Before starting the video. Please, don't forget to like, share and subscribe to my channel. Thanks. In this video, we will see, how to upgrade, or, downgrade a Ruckus R510 access points firmware from FTP server, using SSH command line tool. There are two questions, which may arise in our mind. First question is that, why do we use FTP server, while upgrading or, downgrading the firmware of an access point? The answer is, FTP server is a central location, where we can save all the firmware files, and then from any PC on our network, we can access these firmware files to upgrade or downgrade the firmware of an AP. If you have no idea that, what an FTP server is, and how to configure it, then please, watch my previous two videos, so that you will have a better idea about an FTP server. I will give the links of both videos in the description of this video. I will not go into the detail of the FTP server topic here in this video. The second question is that, if we can easily upgrade, or downgrade the firmware, via web interface then, why do we use the SSH command line tool for this purpose? The answer is, if, for any reason, we are unable to access the web interface of our AP, in that case, we will use the SSH command line tool, to upgrade or downgrade the firmware of our AP. Note. It is to be noted that, in this video, I will upgrade the firmware of my access point. I will not downgrade the firmware in this video, but, the procedure is the same for downgrading the firmware also. Now, let's proceed towards the practical video. Before upgrading or, downgrading the firmware, we need to make sure that, both the devices, I mean, the access point and the FTP server are connected to our network and, communicating well with our PC. So, what will I do? I will open the CMD on my PC, and, I will try to ping the IP address of both the devices one by one. First, I will ping the IP address of my access point, which is, 10.0.2.40. We can see that, the access point is responding, which means, the access point is connected to our network and is alive. Secondly, I will ping the IP address of our FTP server, which is 10.0.2.56. FTP server is also responding well, means that, FTP server is also connected to the network and, working fine. After verifying the connectivity, between all the devices, I will now check the current firmware, of the access point, along with other configurations. I am doing this just to show you that, after upgrading the firmware, will it change the other configurations or not? So, as per my practice, I will compare the configurations along with the firmware, once the upgrade process is completed. To check this, I will open the internet browser on my PC and, I will type the full URL address, like https colon forward slash forward slash followed by the IP address of my access point. If this page appears, then click on the advanced button, and then, click on the link, proceed to followed by the IP address of the access point. On the login page, I will enter the current username and the current password to log into the web management interface of our AP. I will press the login button after entering the username and password. Here on the web management interface, I have changed the default device name of this AP. The next important thing is to check the current firmware of this AP. After upgrading the firmware process is completed, we will reconfirm that, this firmware version must be changed to the new upgraded version. I already have downloaded the latest available version for my access point and saved on the FTP server. So let me access the FTP server to show you the firmware file which I have downloaded. Here, in the address bar, I will type the URL along with the default port number to access my FTP server. We can see that, the firmware file, which I downloaded, is located in the root directory of my FTP server. We can see that, this downloaded firmware version, is the latest from the current version of our AP's firmware. 
If I click on the Internet option under the Configuration tab, we can see that I have assigned a static IP address to this AP. If I check the SSIDs against 2.4G and 5G, we can see that I have created a single SSID against each frequency with the name test. We will reconfirm all these configurations, once we upgrade the firmware. I will now log out and minimize the browser. I will open an application called PuTTY, which I installed on my PC to access the AP using SSH command line interface. On the main page of this application or software, in the host IP address, enter the IP address of the access point. In the port number, since I did not change the default port number on my access point, so I will leave it as it is. Under the connection type, make sure that the SSH connection type is selected. Press the OK button to connect to the AP via SSH command line interface. After successfully connecting with the AP, it will ask to enter the username, who will be accessing the AP's interface. This is not the username of the login credentials of the AP. We can enter any name here as we want to. Press the Enter key from the keyboard after entering the login as name. Now it is asking to enter the username, so here I will enter the username, which is Infotech. Press again the Enter key from the keyboard, and it will now ask to enter the password. I will enter the password and then press the Enter key. We have successfully logged in to the AP via SSH command line interface. Now let me open the text file containing all the commands to upgrade the firmware from FTP server. The first command is, fw set host followed by the IP address of the FTP server. Type the first command and then press the enter key. The word OK means, that the IP address of the FTP server is correct and the command has been processed successfully. If the word OK does not appear, it means that, there might be any problem with the command or the arguments which we provide. The next command is, FW set proto, means which protocol we will be using. So I will enter the command FW set proto followed by the FTP, means that we are using FTP protocol here. Next command is, FW set user, asking to enter the username, which has access to the FTP server. In my previous video, I created a local user, named ftp-local and, I also assigned the read and write permission to this local user, while accessing the FTP server. So I will enter command fw set user, followed by the username ftp-local. Next command is to provide the password of the user, which we mentioned in the above command, I mean, the user ftp-local. So I will type the command followed by the password, which I set for the user ftp-local. Press the enter key. In the next command, we need to provide the exact name of the firmware file along with its extension. So again, I will type the command fw set control, followed by the exact name of the firmware file along with its extension which is, .bl7. We can see that, all the commands along with its arguments have been successfully processed, I mean, the FTP server is connected, the protocol has been set to FTP, the login credentials of the user, I mean the username and the password is correct, the image file or firmware file name is also correct. After everything is set, the next command is to upgrade the firmware. So, I will now type the command update, and then press the enter key. Wait for the upgrading process to complete. We can see that, it says, completed, means that the firmware upgrading process is completed now. The final step is to reboot the AP. So I type the command reboot to restart the access point. Meanwhile, I will open the CMD and will type the ping command with minus T switch to continuously monitor the connectivity with AP. Since, the access point is rebooting, we will lose the communication and this message will appear, which says, remote side unexpectedly closed. 
Wait for a few minutes, so that the AP's reboot process is completed, and get into the stable mode. We will monitor the ping command, and I will close the PuTTY application now. The access point is now powered on, and we can see that, it is now responding to the ping command. After the updating process is completed, I will now again open the web browser and, try to access the web interface of the AP, just to reconfirm the IP address, the login credentials, the current firmware, and other configurations of the access point. So, I will enter the full URL address and, I will use the same IP address of the access point, which I use, before upgrading the firmware. We can see that, the login page is accessed with the same IP address, means, the IP address remains the same. I will now check the login credentials, so I will enter the username and the password, which I used before upgrading the firmware. We can see that, we have successfully logged into the web management interface, if I check the current version of the firmware, we can see that, the firmware has also been upgraded to the new available version. Now let me check the other configurations. The device name is the same. If I go to the internet, we can see that the IP address is the same. If I check the SSIDs against 2.4G and 5G, we can see that there is no change in the SSIDs as well. It means that upgrading the firmware has nothing to do with the other configurations of the AP, except the firmware itself. I mean, only the firmware will be upgraded or downgraded, and nothing else will be changed. So don't worry about the other configurations of the AP, as the upgrading process will have no effect on any other configurations of the AP. That's it. The upgrading or downgrading the firmware of a ruckus access point from FTP server via SSH command line tool has been completed. I hope this video will be helpful. Thank you for watching this video. Hi, if you like this video then, do like, share and subscribe to my channel. Thanks.